Hey everyone, it's Penn Hardy here, and in today's video, we're reviewing the all-new Subaru Forester. Before we get into this video, I do want to mention that this was filmed at the Utah Auto Show, so it's just going to be a walk-around type video. It's not going to be driving in this particular video. And then, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So let's take a look at this 2025 Forester. Now I'm gonna say some things that will make it so you can't unsee certain things with this Forester. First off, it's got a 2.5 liter boxer engine. This is a four cylinder if you're wondering, 180 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque. And you can see the headlight design kind of has a split light design. It looks eerily similar to the current generation Chevy Equinox. Again, like I said, once you see it, you cannot unsee it. The front end of the new Forester, it looks like the Equinox. And I will say, I love that color on the Forester. I'm glad that Subaru's kind of finally doing some, I mean, they've had some exciting colors, but like this is a cool color on a Subaru. At least that's what I think. But yeah, it looks like it looks like an Equinox. It seriously looks like an Equinox from, this, from the front. Uh, those wheels, I thought, I thought they did a good job with them with the silver and the metallic gray. And then look at the fender flare. I'm pretty sure that was like taken off of a WRX. Like that looks so similar to the WRX fender flares. And then notice with the silver brake caliper kind of all comes together. And yeah, I was kind of pointing that out because I was like, come on, are we, are we stealing parts from everything? Equinox front end, WRX side with the fender flares and everything. It's the bodywork, And I thought that design detail there in the center was pretty cool. And then they blacked the mirror caps. I think that's a good look. I mean, especially with this kind of flat gray color, it's a nice contrast. And then they had the center open there. And notice the rear fender flare though looks, yeah, kind of normal, right? No venting or anything like that. So interesting. But yeah, look at that side profile. It's, you know, there are some similarities to the previous Forester. Again, the biggest, you can see the, the lights, the biggest change. And then I thought that was interesting with the symmetrical all wheel drive badge, how they're like really emphasizing that. Now tail lights, here's what you will not be able to unsee. Kia Sportage. It seriously, it looks like the Kia Sportage taillight cluster. <laughs> Very similar. You can see the touring badge there, and then we got like the parking sensors and singular exhaust tip. Uh, but yeah, and I will say props to Subaru for having a car that I could actually get in and like open and everything. I really appreciate that. A lot of manufacturers have their cars like locked up. It's kind of kind of annoying. So thank you, Subaru. Anyways, cargo cover there in the back, and then you guys can see with the seats to fold them down. It's always a nice feature to have. And this doesn't really look like it's any, at least physically, it doesn't look like it's any bigger than the previous Forester. It looks like it's pretty much the same size with the cargo space, which isn't bad. The Forester, is, it's a pretty spacious crossover. But look at that, Kia Sportage. Like a little bit bigger, not as like, you know, kind of sporty looking as a Sportage, but yeah, it, it, yeah. So Equinox front end, WRX side, and then Sportage rear. You, once you see it, you can't unsee it. But yeah, look at the door panel there. Um, nice material use. I thought they did a good job with that. Seems like Subaru's trying to go more upscale with their newer cars, I've noticed. And then the seats, I thought that was pretty cool, again, with the trim. And yeah, you can see space. Again, the Forester isn't a huge crossover, but I mean, you can fit adults back there pretty comfortably. Got heated seats in the back, USB ports. And yeah, headroom was pretty good. I mean, I had, I had a few inches above me. And then with the front door panel, you can see it's identical to the back, except the front, I remember the front door panel was soft touch at the top, the back wasn't. So there's a little bit of a difference there. That's most cars. They always <laughs> will cheap out a little bit on the back ones. Memory seats, and then you can see with the window controls and automatic there for the front two, mirror adjustments and blind, uh, are, yeah, I think this one had super eyesight, the blind spot monitoring. Anyways, with the front seats, again, similar design to the back. Yeah, it seems like they're going for a sportier theme. Interesting to see the wilderness with this. And then you can see there for like the hatch and then the, all that. And then I thought that was pretty cool in the dash with that trim, I think that looked nice. And then with the steering wheel, it's just Subaru's modern wheel. Um, you know, not the biggest diameter, which is fine. I like that, you got paddle switches there for the CVT. And then you can see all the practical controls on the front. And you can tell this like, this vehicle looks like full production pretty much. And then notice the, it is a pre-production car, but it looks pretty much full production as this thing. Um, but gauge cluster, they still do an analog and little screen there in the center. Uh, but you know, some people, they like that. They don't want the big digital gauge cluster because it's just another thing to break that's expensive to replace. Big infotainment system though. And some people like Subaru's new infotainment system. Some people don't, I think it's pretty good. 
wireless phone charging pad. I like the shifter. And they actually use a real shifter, right? <laughs> you have a little parking brake there. And you can see the camera. So it looks like it's 360 camera. And then, yeah, pretty normal center console for the segment in terms of the sizing and all of that. Nice padding. And then that was cool on the dash. Look, look at that. That's fun. And then more soft touch there. And it's pretty normal glove box. Not, nothing too extraordinary about it. it. Looks like it had the camera rear view mirror, which is always a nice feature. And then again, yeah, center if it doesn't seem, I, I, I think this is more of like a heavy refresh rather than the full redesign. They changed, again, the front end looks a lot, but yeah, it seems like there was a lot of carryover too. But let me know you guys think about the new Forester with the looks and all of that. Thank you. 